Welcome to another wonderful and fascinating analysis of the potato eaters here at the Masterpiece series. We're just getting, uh, we're finishing off this analysis of the master of the potato eaters and we will go on to uh, talk about something else today. But meanwhile, let's finish it off. We, we're, we finished off where we said that the would-be pastor has turned into a prophet. As we have seen, there is much provocation coming from the potato eaters. This provocation does not come in the form of a fresh style or movement of any kind. It is a provocation of a new attitude towards people. It is about a deeper understanding of all sides to be fair and just and never cruel with each other. It is about the indignities we inflict on others that is weighed here. In other words, our individual existence should not override someone else's. We are the machinations of ourselves. We have come to realize how important a work of art the potato eaters is on many levels. We have discovered its exceptional original qualities and we have explored its masterful and provocative reach. We now know it is a revolutionary painting which tries to change human nature itself in its altruism and humanity. This makes the potato eaters a unique out of this world experience an experience called a masterpiece. I hope you enjoyed that uh, in-depth analysis of that painting. Uh, I think that it was well worth it. It took a few videos, but it was well worth it. And uh, I want you now, I want to introduce to you now a very small essay that I wrote on, well, it's called the Wizard of Oz analogy. Now, remember, everything that we speak about in this series is all going to be somehow referring to something creative, okay? It doesn't have to be a painting, though, or a sculpture. It could even be just an idea. So this one is like an idea. And let's follow this idea down a yellow brick road. It's called the Wizard of Oz analogy. And of course it refers to the classic story of the Wizard of Oz. I just thought I would like to bend our minds to that particular story and uh, it's always been heartrending for me to see the movie <laughs> with Dorothy and the little dog and so forth, trying to find themselves, trying to find their way back, and basically all the characters with her try to find themselves too. So we're all following a yellow brick road, are we not? Whether we are aware of it or not, we are. And on this road we are following we live out our dreams and ambitions, our struggles and denials, the illusions we believe in, all are expressed in the journey down the yellow brick road. <laughs> because we are so many, our experiences vary for one another, yet stay the same in intent. Everyone has a contrary intention and a different dream made to measure according to their personalities. But the result seems to be always the same. All the yellow brick roads lead to one place, a place called the Emerald City. But why? <laughs> what is going on there? The Emerald City is where the great Oz lives and rules with unyielding power and consideration. There is pomp and circumstance around him. He's a great sage 
in place to resolve every problem. We feel safe in our box protected by the elements. Oz is our savior, or so we believe. The show is spectacular and certainly distracting enough in the Great Hall. A huge projected and inflated image blasts its message amidst the tempest of fire and fury. We are always overcome by this show of enormity and are brought to our knees. It is an illusion, of course. The spectacular fireworks pull our attention from the real prize at hand. But if we take the time to notice a small curtain hiding a tiny room wherein a little man frantically moves cogs and pushes wheels and pushes buttons, screaming into a microphone, we see the truth. The great sage of wisdom and fortitude is not other than a terrified little man, frightened out of his own shadow, as we all are, intent on fooling us into a false sense of confidence, as we all have, living in denial, as we do in our everyday lives. Who is this little man calling himself Oz, as if he be a god? The truth is implacable, does not yield to any illusion. If we follow the yellow brick road, we follow it to find the truth about ourselves and our misplaced confidences. We follow it to discover our hidden courage, natural virtue, and imagination. Within it, we discover who this trembling little man really is. He is the noblest creature ever made, and no animal could remotely come close to his dignity and prowess in being a human being with the potential and compassion of a human being and the understanding of a human being. He is the one and only Wizard of Oz.